hey guys welcome back to my channel so in this video let's kind of talk about um, the market from the year of 2022 and what we can expect going into 2023 so if you guys haven't uh, subscribed to my channel yet then pl please don't forget to subscribe so here we go so so we could see spy mostly was trading between these two uh, bars on an yearly basis um, and in 2020, 21 and 23, it kind of went out of the normal trading zone. And and this is the COVID time where it kind of really took off with more traders. And we can see the volume is also slightly higher. Uh, came down in 2020, but still kind of made a very significant candle out of the channel and traded out of the channel and reached almost $500. Um, and after that, that was 2021 and then in 2023, it kind of gave up all those gains and kind of coming back to, uh, fell into the channel again, but then trying to close out of the channel here. And the other thing to note here is that, uh, we still are keeping our 2020 gains. So like, like if you got in, in 2020, then you probably are still kind of in the positive um, as long as you didn't sell you may be slightly positive but if you bought in 2021 then you probably are going to be down so that's basically looks like the situation if you're in spy and we do see there in this kind of a red candle that we have you know, for 2022 the volume is also significantly higher than uh, 2021 which is not a good sign so the expectancy is that we might fall back into this channel and trade in this channel or f or even below the bottom channel line if we basically give up this support level of around 321 so the 321 would be the critical level in going into three th uh, 2023 can we hold it can we not hold so sticking above the 382 would be ideal that is another support line so if we can stay above 382 maybe we stick out of the channel but let's say if we fall into the channel then we want to look at 321 as our support level and make sure that we don't fall below that if we fall below that uh, hopefully we might recover back into that channel either 2023 or 24 but um, that's the outlook uh, for spy going into the next year uh, going back to the diamonds is kind of slightly better uh, in terms of performance for the diamonds so still we are kind of st uh, staying in this particular channel on the diamonds as well so similar kind of a channel is what it is trading in but uh, the good thing between difference between spy and diamonds is that spy kind of went out of the channel whereas diamonds is still kind of inside the channel with a potential support around the 294 uh, range and then there are a few other supports as well um, 298 305 322 328 so and the major support is this line which is going to correspond to around 293 so that is basically what it looks like going into 2023 um, i mean this is the support for this year but for next year it's more like around 315 ish would be the support level so we're looking to not fall below that going into um, the year 2023 the high projection for is basically going to be around 402 so that's around um, so basically if we can basically put up a positive candle in 2023 that the highest projected around uh, $400 402 something like that so that's basically the diamonds projection um, looking at IWM um, also we kind of trading in that but we can see there's an expansion in the range as we are kind of going over the years it's kind of broadened um, so we can see again we have a red candle uh, which actually popped out of the channel and then we kind of uh, drop back in and we're kind of trying to bounce off the lower um, 
side of the channel here um, and we are kind of staying inside the channel which is a good sign so the potential range looks like to be around um, 175 uh, to around 216 for going into 2023 with a potential if we basically break out of the channel then we're looking at 244 um, but if we do really good then maybe even higher but this would be the early indicator saying that we are kind of uh, doing something great so we need to start off at least for the green candle which I'm expecting we should unless we kind of have a huge drop off like here otherwise we should kind of stay inside this and that would be um, a positive candle formation for 2023 QQQ um, is the worst I guess between all of them because it really expanded in its trading range in the last five years um, tech was very hot so that's why it's kind of blown out of the channel and it is also out of the channel right now but it potentially has a f um, has the chance of actually falling back into this range again so let's see if i put in like a parallel channel what would that look like So we're looking to for it to fall back to something around 216 216 and if we can um, if we basically stay out of the channel then that would be kind of good uh, because tech is kind of more exponential in the way it behaves so if it basically can stay out of this channel um, then it needs to break about the 317 level so the 317 level would be the ideal level for it to go about so that tech basically becomes uh, positive looking at the wix we can see wix has been pretty much uh, flat last year we did not get like a crazy move on the wix um, like there are only two times when VIX went crazy that was in 2020 and again in, two in uh, 2008 and last year was kind of okay I mean it went to maybe like 40 not like 100 so I think previous years we seen VIX almost go to 100 So you shouldn't be looking at UVXY because uh, because of the the way it de depreciates um, it's kind of crazy. That's like probably 20 million or something, which is in 2011 it was like 20 million and now it is like at seven dollars. It's crazy. So same thing with Netflix. We see it is. Um, dropped out of the channel because that's kind of a reflection of the tech uh, and it is actually below the 2020 value and it kind of came down to 160 or something so yeah looks pretty bad same thing with baba as well it's kind of coming back to its uh, ipo price it's probably even lower than its ipo price um, it went to like $85 so I think its IPO price was probably at $60 but it kind of traded about that uh, f in that opening year went to almost 121 um, recently it went up to 300 as well but you know that's 2020 um, but now we're kind of seeing it's back to that 85 range uh, bazoon is going to be another crazy story so here uh, it went up to a high of around 67 in the year of 2018 and then we see it has been steady for the next two years and then we basically see it kind of dropped off now 
to even lower than its uh, opening price or IPO price so it's now trading around five dollars and the IPO year its low was also maybe around 312 but that was just a low it traded up to like fourteen dollars around that year uh, looking at Baidu, Baidu uh, is kind of still sticking to the range. So out of these three China stocks, Baidu seem to be doing slightly better than Baba and uh, Bazoon. It did kind of go to 356, so 356.81 at some point in 2020. But 2020 was a bad year. And 2000, actually this is 2021 is bad and 2022 is also bad. Uh, let's look at NVIDIA so NVIDIA has pretty much uh, given up 2021 gains but it's if you bought in 2020 and holding on you should be slightly in profit so that is the and we can see NVIDIA just going exponential in the last two years but or last three years but then this year it is down big Uh, Microsoft still looks uh, okay because it isn't given up 100% of the 2021 gains. It's just most of it is given up, but it's still kind of holding on to some of the gains of 2021. Uh, same thing I think is for Nvidia as well. Nvidia also kind of not given up 100% of the gains it got in 2021, um, but most of it is gone. And Intel is kind of uh, pretty bad it's given up its gains for the last one two three four five six seven eight years so whatever it is gained in the last eight years is kind of poofed on intel and um, let's see if it can even if it has a chance of uh, getting those back uh, i kind of doubt it though so here with amd just because we talked about intel we should talk about amd so amd also has given up all of its gains in 2021 but in 2020 gains it's still kind of holding on to uh, some of those so which is kind of slightly better but it's not that far away to get back to that support of around uh, 33 and 29 which are supports which it formed in um, like the year of 2018 so 2018 levels it hasn't come coming back whereas Intel has uh, Microsoft as we said it is still holding on to the gains it made in 2021 not given up all of them Apple uh, actually Apple has given up all its gains it has made in um, 2021 it is kind of coming back to the highs of 2020 so if we basically and also as we can see it has gone on an exponential stretch for the last three years so there's a possibility that um, it will want to fall back into the channel here um, if it does fall back into this channel so the channel is i mean it's kind of away, away away from the channel so if we were to kind of fall back into the channel we're looking for levels which are like low of 2020 which is around 74 dollars so Again, that is just not my projection. I'm just kind of saying if we have a red 2023, then that's a possibility. But with Apple, um, you can never say that it'll kind of be a... So if we basically looked at Apple, this is probably the uh, biggest red candle that, is, that it had had over um, any number of years that you count. So, and it's still kind of going to be positive for many people who bought in 2020 and 2019 so there are a lot of longs in Apple so I would think it is still kinda fine uh, let's kinda look at um, Facebook meta so Facebook meta has pretty much given up its gains in the last five years it actually has given up six years of gains but now it's kind of slightly recovered it went to a low of uh, 88 dollars uh, sometime this year and it is kind of not given up to, gone up to its ipo price which would be around 
eighteen dollars so if it were to kind of fall off to eighteen dollars then it is kind of at the IPO price um, in that range between eighteen to fifty so so it's kind of uh, better but it has given up at least five years of gains uh, that it has made looking at Amazon so Amazon um, 2021 was the doji at the top in terms of the year and then we kind of given up pretty much all the gains which you had in 2020 and 2021 and we are kind of uh, knocking on this support which is around $85 so uh, if we give up this support um, then we are looking to fall back to like in the 50s so that would be pretty bad for Amazon but uh, that is a potential but if we basically th stick with the channel um, we're looking to get back into the positive on Amazon maybe around the 100 range uh, between 100 to 135 range is basically the channel uh, in which Amazon should get back into just based on the um, long-term trend it should get back to the channel so let me just draw the channel So yeah, if Amazon were to get back in the channel, we're looking for something around 119 to uh, 159 range for Amazon going into uh, 2023. Google. So Google pretty much also has given up all its gains from the year 2021. But 2000, if you bought in 2020, you still are kind of okay. Uh, Tesla. So Tesla has pretty much given up its gains which it has made in 2021 uh, 2020 it's given up more than half of its gains uh, if it falls back to the $28 uh, which is not that far away if you measure the candle the, the amount of drop it had then we're basically looking um, yeah, so that would be the range if it kind of falls back into that particular channel. It's kind of crazy. I mean, we see that uh, it has gone $411 was the high, and we kind of started dropping off in 2022 all the way. So very big drop in Tesla. I mean, if this drop keeps going, the support is basically around uh, 32, between 28 to uh, $32. So big range here for Tesla um, in terms of uh, uh, supports I would think the hundred dollars would be the major uh, support I think there's a potential that will come to the hundred dollars in 2023 and then maybe trade around that range and see if it can get some support and then get back uh, and get back going but if the hundred dollar bakes then uh, we can expect it uh, to drop off to that uh, 50 marks so I'm uh, not looking that great for Tesla, at least based on the uh, setup and the outlook that we have. Roku, um, just bad. I mean, we're kind of looking for it to take support around $24. So that's basically where it is headed, I think, in 2023. Uh, Lululemon. Uh, not too bad. It's kind of given up all its gains in 2021. Gains are gone, but 2020 gains, it's still kind of holding. And also it is kind of in the channel um, where it's kind of taken off. It's kind of in the channel, so uh, I think it'll probably stay in the channel. Costco probably a positive. It has still kind of holding some of the gains of 2021 it doesn't given up everything so Costco uh, and also it is kind of in the channel trading in the channel so it's kind of hitting the bottom so there's a possibility that it can uh, go back and be a leader and then get about the uh, 609 so if it can get about 609 then it would be actually 
um, going into the positive uh, even for 2023 and um, yeah you guys get the idea so BA um, kind of dropped off and gave up all these gains for 2020 um, from what is this year so 2013 so it's probably given up like last 10 years of gains but uh, right now it has recovered some of those and then sticking around the 189 so let's see if I mean this is kind of a in a downtrend right now but uh, let's see if it's a going to be a good year or bad year for BA BA is kind of a, a news oriented so if any plane kind of crashes or things kind of happen in the negative then we can see this actually again drop off to those uh, levels of 114 90 ish so those ranges are potentially possible even in 2023 so I'm gonna say that's pretty much it let me look at a couple of more which uh, probably have interest so Home Depot uh, still nicely sticking in the channel so that's a good sign uh, cat is actually positive for the year um, CMG looks to be okay uh, still in the channel uh, DE is actually v highly positive for the year uh, Avgo also looks to be sitting in the channel so these are some good stocks uh, GameStop not so good um, looking to drop off to that $16 right now it's around $20 so $16 would be uh, the next support level uh, have a go looking to be sticking in the channel so that's a good sign uh, snap no snap is pretty much coming lower than its IPO price and then uh, Amgen looks good and then Gilead is kind of flat I mean it's kind of a formed a bullish flag on the ELEs uh, so potentially maybe having a positive candle going to the next year uh, TDOC no go gone back to its uh, pre IPO price and Square not good might fall back to its uh, IPO price ring so ring central yeah this also might be uh, falling back to its uh, pre IPO price which is kind of around 17 to 19 dollars so I think that's pretty much it I'm just trying to quickly go through some of the stocks which I normally track so GG does not look good um, on a downtrend um, bear flags on the ear Disney is one more thing I wanted to see so Disney is also kind of given up most of its gains in the last uh, eight years so we might get some support around the $51 if we basically have a red ear so that's pretty much it for the yearly review I know nothing looks so bright but let's see how this kind of plays out <laughs> So that's pretty much it for uh, this review. So if you guys enjoyed this video and found this useful, then please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Bye.